I'm Sarah McDonald in Kelowna, where Liberal leader Christy Clark is expected to fare much better in her own riding this election than she did in 2013. Many properties are already beyond help and evacuees are getting frustrated. Thousands of them already out of their homes and many are unsure what they'll be returning to. This is my house. It's a treacherous journey through hazardous floodwaters just to reach Jennifer Houghton's front door. This is my front door. Inside almost everything all but destroyed by historic flooding. The first time the flood went through is about about this high. A second surge expected at any time. It's shocking, it's heartbreaking, um, it's, it's painful. Thousands have now been out of their homes for more than a week. Evacuation orders enforced by police. Please prepare to evacuate the area in 10 minutes. With some now standing their ground, simply refusing to leave. How do you feel about that when you Angry. hear that? How come? It's a control thing. Well, we're trapped. We're trapped. We're trapped. It's like prison. This couple separated by barricades for days. Randy Harp trapped on one side. It scared the shit out of me. How's that sound? It really scared me. Because I wanted to come home and be here for my lady and my dad. His family on the other. So you've been here for how many days? A whole week. <laughs> the whole week. On Friday, properties like this one also put on notice. Riverbanks unstable as waters rise. The Canadian forces now on standby. We are there just to, to help them get across that finish line and make sure that surge doesn't, uh, doesn't impact the city any more than it already has. Hundreds of soldiers working to protect what can still be saved. I don't know if it makes any difference to shut the door at this point. <laughs> Some livelihoods already beyond help. Okay, Sarah, so walk us through the next 24 hours here. What should residents there expect? The next 24 hours is a crucial window for this region. That is when we are expected to see the peak of that so-called second surge, though some positive news from officials late today. They say they no longer expect these waters to rise quite as high as initially expected, though Norma, they say the threat of flooding and perhaps even to human life is still severe. Needless to say, not a lot of people getting a lot of sleep here in the Kootenai Boundary region this week. Scott. Okay, Sarah McDonald once again on the flood watch. The people here in BC's interior are finally catching a break tonight, though this change in forecast comes too late for some. The destruction in flood-ravaged Grand Forks, even more stark from above ground. Down below, the Canadian Armed Forces getting a first-hand look at the devastation, finally penetrating properties cut off by floodwaters for more than a week. My dad was trapped down there, I was trapped at my house. This evacuee's family farm among the hardest hit, floodwaters stealing their livelihood, their houses, and their animals. Our calves had just given birth, and uh, the calves drown, and the one cow, the mother cow drown, and uh, two other cows drown, and we never did find the calves. The cows are dead up there, but the calves are gone. So many things lost to the water here can't ever be replaced, though some can still be saved. We've uh, put together approximately 100,000 sandbags since we've been here. By all those sandbags and a break in the weather. There was a rain event that missed us, or largely missed us anyways, and, and so that's provided us some relief and, and we've seen the rivers drop uh, quite a bit. Thousands of evacuees already forced to flee in the first round of flooding are finally exhaling. An expected second surge losing strength Saturday just as water levels were forecast to peak again. It should be good, fingers crossed. If the water comes back up, i got a good barrier to the point where uh, I don't have to worry about any more coming in. The focus now in many no-go zones is damage assessment. Officials now deciding who can return and when. The river is running through the barn. The road to recovery for others, not as simple. Many livelihoods already destroyed, others hanging by a thread. And 40 of those Riverside properties have now been deemed a high risk to collapse. The water is still rising and not just here in Grand Forks. The military confirming today some of their troops could be heading to other parts of the province in the coming days. Their work here largely finished. The Canadian forces are pulling out of Grand Forks as flood ravaged parts of this province begin the long recovery process. The trail of destruction left in the wake of raging waters now tangible as evacuees return home however they can. That came through another area and it came through quite badly. 
With an expected second surge of floodwaters fizzling out, thousands of evacuees in this region are returning. Evacuation orders already rescinded for hundreds of properties. It's because the river's gone down. The anxiety is now lifting. And that's happening with everyone here. Others still deemed too unsafe to be lived in. There are still a lot of properties that are completely you know, surrounded by water still. It flooded the banks, it came right over and made its own path. It in the hardest hit areas, lawns have turned to lakes as dozens of houses at higher elevations still hang in the balance. Many properties completely saturated. You have no water, you have no sewer, and you have no power. Most of them ineligible for flood insurance. Homeowners now relying on financial aid from the federal government. There's a lot of money here tied up in these places. And but what can you do? Meanwhile, those hit by the first round of flooding are relieved to have been spared by the second. It didn't come. And we all went, ah. Thousands expected to be given the green light to return home in the coming days. Many still unsure what they'll find. But no timeline has been set for properties like these, still uninhabitable, some sitting under nearly a meter of water. Officials warning it could be weeks at least until all residents can return home. Sandy. CTV Sarah McDonald. Several square blocks of what appears to be a residential rural area completely inaccessible to the public tonight after homicide investigators discovered a man's body somewhere near this property after responding to reports of a shooting earlier this afternoon. That snowfall warning has now been lifted, but here in the Fraser Valley, they have not seen the end of this weather system just yet. Our Sarah McDonald is on that part of the story where this chaotic scene all ended this afternoon. Sarah. Mike, this is the scene where the suspect was ultimately and finally apprehended. This is still a very active scene tonight. You can see over my right shoulder that car the suspect was driving, that allegedly stolen black Ford Mustang. So why was the suspect here in B.C.? Why was he allegedly armed? Why was he allegedly driving a stolen vehicle? Those are all questions investigators want answers to tonight. The Independent Investigations Office and I hit now taking over this case, and we're told this scene will likely be active for quite some time, well into tomorrow at this point, Mike, with one officer killed, another hospitalized and that suspect expected to survive tonight. CTV Sarah McDonald is following this. Sarah, a lot of reaction to this online. Well, in Mijung, this video has now caught the attention of transit police who say they are investigating and they plan to speak to the young woman in the pink jacket who you are about to hear from in this video. Take a listen. Well, Michelle, this fire is proving to be a difficult one. More than six hours after it first broke out, crews are still working to knock it down in this neighborhood just steps away from where that train collided with that tanker truck earlier tonight. Hundreds of residents here in this neighborhood forced to pick up and leave with just a moment's notice earlier this evening. Police telling us just moments ago they are now in the process of reopening Low Heat Highway between Shaughnessy Street and Oxford Street. Something we were told earlier this evening would only happen once fire officials were confident that this fire was under control. So, Julie, some positive news here tonight for the residents of Port Coquitlam and especially commuters heading into the morning rush hour.